Hello and welcome to this video build log where I'm going to be looking at making a steampunk costume. Now I'm off to uh, the Asylum which is the UK's largest steampunk festival in a few months. Uh, this is held in Lincoln and uh, I speak about it a little bit more fully in a previous video so click on the link uh, at the bottom right there if you're interested in hearing a bit more about that. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is making a uh, costume for the event. Now here's my costume from the previous year and as you can see it's sort of loosely based on the Predator. Um, I'd made the mask um, several years previously and decided to expand it into a full costume so I need to come up with something else gotta have a new costume every year so um, last year I had the idea of making a steampunk version of the power suit from Elysium um, really love the look of that uh, costume love the film um, and I thought it would be quite interesting to try and uh, make a Victorian steam powered version of this. I like the idea of the pistons being able to move as I move and it having a sort of a kinetic feel to it as though the um, the machinery was driving me where in fact my motion will be driving the machinery um, so here's a few sketches of what I'm sort of intending to make uh, I'm not going to make the whole suit um, I think it's just going to be a bit too expensive and possibly a bit too complicated for me to do the whole thing but what I'm going to do is make one arm um, my previous costume um, had a color scheme which was based upon a beam engine that I'd seen in Q Steam Museum um, here's a few pictures of that engine um, I said in a previous video that a lot of steampunk stuff tends to end up being brown and copper or brass. Um, you know, leather and brass is sort of quite a common um, set of materials to use. So I like the idea of doing something that is, isn't using those colours, something a bit different. And a lot of Victorian technology was actually quite colourful and ornate. So I quite like this green colour scheme. And as you can see, I used it on the backpack for my costume here. So what I'm going to make is going to look um, similar. It's going to have a sort of similar design aesthetic. Uh, but it's going to be a little bit more, um, have a little bit more motion to it. What I'm going to do here is build this out of wood to give it a frame. I'm going to make the pistons out of uh, plastic pipe. Uh, and then I'm going to cover everything in um, some sheets of styrene plastic and then paint it up. So hopefully the fact that it's made of wood should be concealed beneath the smooth plastic. So that's the plan, um, so let's get started. What I'm doing here is just cutting out the basic shapes from MDF, uh, which is medium density fiberboard. It's kind of a lightweight wood, and this stuff's uh, quite thin, so it's really easy to cut with a craft knife. Now, what I've got are these bearings. The basic structure of this is going to be made from wood, and I'm using bearings to allow me to get some smooth motion between the, the uh, different pieces of the structure. So, as you can see, the 15mm uh, dowling rod fits uh, quite snugly into the bearing there. Um, so, that's going to help me form some joints that can easily move. Now that's not the only bearing I've got. Uh, what I've got here is what's called a Lazy Susan bearing. I think they're sort of used for turntables, like if you wanted to have um, something that you could perhaps put a sculpture on and rotate as you sculpt. Um, so I've got this. This is going to sit on my shoulder and form the sort of main shoulder joint. I'm also building the main structure out of wood here. So this piece is just some uh, wood that I've cut to shape. Um, as you can see, I've also glued on some MDF circles here just to give it a bit of structural uh, detail. I've also got some other bearings and some 15mm dowling rod which uh, fit quite snugly together. And finally I've got these pillow block bearings uh, which are going to come in handy for when I uh, add some pistons to the, to the piece. So let's start putting all this together. Now as you can see here, I've jumped ahead in time slightly. Um, this is going to be the main shoulder structure, so um, hopefully you might be able to see the, um, how this might work. I'm going to put my arm through the uh, large circle there, and the bracket will sit on my arm and allow me to move my arm up and down and back and forth. Uh, what I'm doing here is just uh, mixing up some car body filler. Uh, I've cut out the basic shapes in MDF, and inside you can probably see that I've got some wood in there for structural support. So that's all screwed together and it's strong enough to hold everything in place, but I also need a specific shape to form the shape of my final piece. So what I'm doing here is just mixing up some car body filler and filling in the cavities. So here's the basics of how this is going to work. My arm's going to fit through the uh, large circle there and the bracket that's attached to the side of it is going to sit on my arm. So as you can see we've got up and down motion for the arm and also back and forth motion here. Now here I'm actually trying it out for real. Now I don't have any straps or anything like that attached to me at the minute, so I'm just holding it in place. But hopefully you can see how that can move um, as my arm moves. 
Now what I need to do is attach some uh, pistons to this. Now obviously they're not real pistons, um, but what I've done is to make these out of uh, PVC plumbing pipe and some steel tube. So this is all just cut to shape and there's some spaces inside of slightly smaller tubing um, that allow the two pieces to sit in orientation and move in a sort of a smooth linear fashion. So I mentioned earlier that I've got these pillow block bearings. So the basic uh, principle here is I'm going to attach the pillow block bearings to the shaft at the base of the piston there. And that's going to form the basic hinge joint so that the piston can move. So there's the pillow block bearings attached to just a wooden bracket. Uh, and as you can see, that's moving quite smoothly up and down there. I've just got everything sort of tacked together at the minute, so it's not permanent. Um, so that's moving quite smoothly. Uh, as you can also see, there's a side-to-side -side motion as well, which will allow my arm to move back and forth. Now, obviously, it's all wood, bits of plastic and metal and just screws everywhere at the minute, but hopefully you can sort of see the basic structure of where this is going. And obviously, the really fun stuff will be uh, painting this up, adding all of the cabling and mechanical bits to make it look really cool. But that's the basic principle of how this is all going to work. Um, obviously, I need to add additional pistons, so there's going to be pistons on the chest and on the back to allow back and forth mo movement of the shoulder as well. I'll also be building a sort of a, a steam powered power plant that will be carried on the back and obviously there'll be all the normal uh, steampunk pipes and gadgets and um, gizmos that will be attached to that to make it look like it's a functioning machine although of course it isn't. Ingenious devices keep me alive in perpetual motion these well thanks very much for watching, uh, I'll be posting more videos on this project and others so please do subscribe if you're interested in keeping up with what's going on. Uh, you can also find out more on my website which is uh, www.thedarkpower.com uh, or you can find me on Facebook, uh, just search for The Dark Power.